Yeah, uh, Delta Cal API. So I want to present you what uh, we have done for the version 1.0, what is new in Delta Cal, what we are currently working on, and uh, what you can expect in future that will happen in the project. So for those you don't know, uh, Delta Cloud is a, a cloud provider abstraction API. So the API is how programmers usually interact with the various cloud providers. Right? So if you are doing some application that use the cloud, so you usually speak to, with the cloud provider through the cloud provider API. And surprisingly, all the APIs are different. So every cloud provider has its own uh, custom API. With API, you can manage the full life cycle of the virtual machine. So you can actually create a virtual machine uh, by picking the, the image that uh, usually contains the root uh, uh, disk of the, of the machine. Then you set the sizing of the virtual machine. Then you choose where the machine will be deployed. So it can be a geographical region, can be a data center, can be a cluster in your data center. Uh, then you just run the VM. The VM uh, do the actual job, so you do some processing or something, and then you destroy the VM. That's the cloud thing. Uh, the, as I said, all APIs are different. Uh, there are many reasons for that. One, of, there are some technical reasons, right? So the vSphere will never have the REST API because all their uh, internal application structure is uh, SOAP based, so there's no sense, no point to have the REST API for them. There are some proprietary reasons, right? So Amazon will never uh, say that they want to standardize the API or they want to open it or something because it's built uh, just for the product. So it fits for Amazon and they don't care about any other implementations. And there is also this vendor looking thing that prevents you from switching from one provider to another. So without a cloud API, you can hopefully abstract all these differences between cloud providers. It protects uh, you from the API changes and from the incompatibilities, which is uh, which is very nice. For example, uh, I don't know if you if you know, but the, the switch from RepM 3.0 to 3.1 was not uh, really like painless, but for you it was transparent because we fix all the incompatibilities, small incompatibilities in the RepM driver Delta Cloud. So you haven't observed any major breakage if you use the RepM 3.0, 3.1, right? Uh, currently we have three frontends. So there is no just Delta Cloud. We have also the CME API frontend and EC2 API frontend. Uh, I will talk about the two, the last two more in the next slides. And we become the Apache Software Foundation top level project. So we graduated from incubator. We are we are now the top level project without any incubation. Which basically means we can do releases as we want. We don't need to wait for some committee or something like that. <coughs> so how Delta Cloud works? Uh, we Delta Cloud is written in Ruby uh, using Sinatra. So we are not using Rails, anything it's very simple, small set of uh, Ruby files connected together with LAV, you know. Uh, it's a REST-based server, so it's programming language agnostic, so if your programming language has the HTTP client, you can use Delta Cloud without any problem. Uh, it's, it has minimal effort to setting up. Uh, we have the packages for Fedora, for RHEL. We are working on the Debian packages, and uh, I think in open source we have also package. Uh, we, have, uh, we have gem, so if you do the gem install Delta Cloud minus core, you will have everything set up. You can start using Delta Cloud without installing anything else. So how Delta Cloud basically works, uh, this is the REST API. Uh, the REST API is a set of drivers which have a consistent a uh, API. And those drivers talk to the backend provider. And for you as a cloud client, it's completely transparent. So you always speak with Delta Cloud REST API. Actually, this is not true anymore because we have no longer just one uh, REST API. We also have the CME API here and EC2 API here. So your client can decide like which API it wants to use. Uh, yeah, I will go for that. So we have Delta Cloud API 
zero, yeah, if we released that a couple of months ago. There are a lot of features what the, uh, was added. First, if we support the DMTF CIMI uh, 1.0 frontend. So Delta Cloud is currently the first implementation into portal that implements CIMI. Uh, we have EC2 frontend. The initial, uh, you know, why we start working on the EC2 frontend was that uh, the OpenStack community said they don't want to have the EC2 frontend anymore. They don't want to maintain it in OpenStack. So they was looking for some possibilities how to replace that with something. And they found that in Delta Cloud we have OpenStack driver. So why just don't add the EC2 frontend and they can just you know remove their EC2 uh, adapter for OpenStack. So that's why we start working on the EC2 API, but OpenStack, you know, it's it's kind of weird because now they changed the mind back and they want to keep the the EC2 frontend, so, but we got this EC2 frontend for free, so, okay. So, so does the EC2 frontend mean that you can talk to Delta Cloud using the EC2 API? Yes, query API. For any backend provider? Yes, for, for RepM, for OpenStack, for Mock, for, for EC2. You can even talk to EC2 using EC2 API, if you are Moscowist or something. <laughs> but, 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 but actually, you can, it, it, it's, it's very nice, you can start instance. Uh, using the EC2 API, this works pretty nice. Of course, the EC2 API has a lot of limitations. For example, you can't list the hardware profiles with EC2 API because EC2 just have them on the website. They don't provide any way of advertising and many other small things. So it's just really like proof of concept that yeah, it is possible to do it. We revamped, the, uh, we add the support for the OpenStack Essex. So currently we are fully supporting this provider with uh, all kind of fancy stuff like uh, blob streaming and uh, creating instances, user data injection, everything. We also add support for RefM 3.0, so you can use this fancy new user data injection in 3.0. And uh, uh, yeah, I think that was the support. And we fixed some small incompatibilities in, in API edit. If Refm guys say that they are they have a they are backward compatible, they are not. So don't don't believe that. They do a small changes. Yeah, and the definition of compatible for the Tel Aviv office is somewhat loose. We have learned. Yeah. Well, um, we did a major revamp of our internal application structure. Before we were the Sinatra application, so we used the, the application style where we just launched the Sinatra app and that was it. Now we are we are modular application, so actually you can use Delta Cloud as a REC adapter. So you can mount Delta Cloud to, to the Rails application or to whatever other REC application. I will show a demo of, of that in two slides. So uh, we moved away to Rabbit DSL. Rabbit is actually responsible for generating the roads and auto generating documentation, uh, validation of parameters and everything. So it's the uh, heart of Delta Cloud. So now we have the official upstream repository for that. This is the official Sinatra extensions. It has a lot of people interested in, including the main contributors of Sinatra. So we time to time we're receiving patches for that. So it was a good move. We improved the API documentation generators. So now they include CIMI, so you can browse the CIMI documentation through Delta Cloud as well. I will show you how it looks. Uh, we completely rewritten tests. So we have, we now using tests consistently. We use only min tests for everything. We have a two kind of tests, black box and white box. So with uh, black box text, you can test the whatever API entry point you want. So you just point test to the Delta Cloud API server and we run the test and tell you like, yeah, this server is Delta Cloud compatible. And we also have a, a whole bunch of white box, white box unit tests that you can run for various drivers. <coughs> this was a lot of work. Uh, yeah, Marios improved the big blobs streaming. I don't know if you guys know, but with Delta Cloud, you can actually stream uh, stuff to the EC S3 or Swift. You can actually right now stream a very big blob, like a terabyte or or five gigabyte of blob through Delta Cloud directly to the S3. This is working right now. 
without memory leaking. Uh, and many other small improvements. So we fixed a lot of small bugs and stuff. I think it was like 300 GIRs that was fixed for, 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 for this build. Yeah, and finally we have built a community. So we start receiving a lot of patches outside world. Uh, world. I think this, this is the benefit of uh, doing the DMT of stuff. Because we start receiving patches from guys from Fujitsu, Orange, Telecom Italia, from some random people. Even VMware, I think, sent some patch. So, and it's a lot of patches from, from Revm, Revm guys, because they recently discovered our AC2 frontend. So, and with this, with this frontend, you can use a Revm with EC2 API. So, for them, it was like, oh yeah, that will be a killing feature. So, they start sending patches for that. <coughs> Just one question, what's the status of the OpenStack Folsom support, which is the latest version? If you give me a server with Folsom, I will, I will tell you. I don't have the, any installation okay. or something. I barely set up the SX, it took me like three days to have it uh, running correctly. I so. think I, there's someone from the OpenStack team who has no. a server that we can... No, I asked OpenStack team on OpenStack channel if they have some OpenStack installation I can use for half a day. They say we don't have any. So you need to set up yourself. As yeah, I mentioned the other day, if, you, if, if you've got a spare laptop, you can run it up on your laptop and you can just do a single node installation with one yeah. So if you need help doing that, um, you know, give me or Thomas a shout. Can you make a um, VM on it? Um, you can run it in a VM, but it runs really slowly. Um, well, yeah, that, that, that's fair enough for me. Like, I just want to test the API. So yeah. I, I, I just need to basically launch an instance, see if the API is working correctly. Yeah, so um, so you can run it inside a VM, but the problem there is basically you're going to have to use QEMU with no hardware acceleration, so it is really slow. Um, but yeah, catch up with me on Neil Thomas, yeah. and we can help you sort that out. If you can snapshot the VM and just make it so other people can download, that'll be useful. Yeah, I'm sure we can do that. Can we set it up in the lab? Because I had an astonishingly hard time finding anyone in Red yeah. that had OpenStack working. Yeah, I, I want to discuss this after the lab. Mm -hmm. Okay. They definitely need so, that. So, so, so Derek Higgins um, is the guy um, yeah. who's sorting out the OpenStack lab. Um, and yeah. I'm not really sure what the target audience in terms of users is. Um, but you know, if, if you talk to him nicely, I, I would imagine that he'll give you some time, time on there. Yeah. Um, but I think what most of the OpenStack developers are doing is just running it on their laptops. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's pretty easy to do. Um, if you try and do it manually step by step, um, you, know, you invariably get something slightly wrong and it turns into a nightmare, um, which is why I mentioned in the presentation the other day, just using a scripted approach, and um, you know it's nowhere near as flexible, but it just kind of takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. I, th I think someone from the from OpenStack team was working on puppetizing the whole OpenStack installation. So that's what Derek's, that's the, Derek's that's done. That yeah. yeah that's, so that, awesome. that's the OS installer thing, which is on his mm -hmm. website. Yeah. Um, I haven't used it myself, um, but I'm kind of aware of how it works. Um, and then he has got an OpenStack installer, so even if you don't care about heat at all, mm -hmm. um, you could use that to install a working um, demo environment. Yeah, so I will catch you later. Yeah, cool. Presentation. So, now the fun begins. Uh, DMTFC. So, so what it is, is a new cloud standard. It's, uh, it's, it's standard type, so it means cloud infrastructure management interface. Uh, what is good about uh, the MTFC me that is the REST, REST based, so it's the REST API. Uh, it's very complex cloud abstraction, so it abstracts a lot of entities, uh, including the I don't know, disks, uh, uh, volumes, uh, machines, machine team plates, uh, network, network ports. Like there are, I think there are like uh, 100 entities abstracted here in this uh, standard. So, and it's, well, what is really good, it's widely accepted by all major cloud vendors like uh, VMware, Oracle, Red Hat, uh, Microsoft, and others. So, so that's very good because they all agreed that this is the way to go with cloud. So we should expect next year that they start uh, adopting this, this standard to their uh, cloud uh, offerings. We'll see. And what is also good, we participate in this uh, standard creation process. So uh, it was David Lutherford and Marius that was uh, uh, suffering from attending the, the CIMI calls every week. And yeah, the, what, what, is, what is not so cool about the CIMI is that uh, it lacks the real implementers right now. So there is 
nobody in this world that uh, is actually implementing Simi, or you can test the Simi against, except Delta Cloud. And uh, sometimes the, the abstraction model they have is, is really complex. Like I can show you, or maybe I will show you later, but the, 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 the PDF is, is really hard to read. It's, it's, it has like uh, three or 400 pages. It's very descriptive and it's very complex in the relations, how the entities are related together. Uh, they even invented uh, their own query language for the for uh, accessing the latest sources, so you can, for example, expand the XML or just, you know, uh, say I want just this part of the XML. So it was IBM idea to to invent this query language, and they have a lot of rules in uh, in the REST protocol and how the XML is uh, serialized to JSON and back. So. Is there, is, is there in the other direction? Is there a Delta Cloud driver for Simi? No, we have the full front end. So yeah, but, but, but I mean, it, it, no. Right, right now there's no other, no other implementation. There is no provider. It doesn't matter. So, but if there was a provider out there that that has Simi as its as, it, as its API, mm -hmm. would we then write a Delta Cloud driver to yeah, talk sure. to Simi? If there, will be, <coughs> but, if, there yeah. will, if there will be a provider for that, we will for sure write the driver. It's not a problem. Sure. But uh, Delta Cloud has a front end, so we do believe if there will be a provider, you will don't need Delta Cloud for that because you just point your application uh, on this provider and it will work. Unless you're Apple, I'm just thinking, for example, conductor where yep. we, we don't have code that talks semi, we would talk Delta Cloud, and so that's where the Delta Cloud driver would be useful. Yeah, if, if there was a, sure. a, an application. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea, actually, to, 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 to drive it like that. So, yeah, if, it's, it's worth to say that in Delta Cloud, we have also the Simi client. So we have a small web application that you can point to the Simi API and so you can manage your resources. It's very limited, but it gets a lot of impression when I was in Shenzhen and I was presenting this client that people sent from their chairs like, wow, this is something. We have the client for somebody who would include it. So with EC2 frontend, as I said, uh, we implement some parts of Amazon EC2 API, like run instance, uh, reboot instance, all the instance actions, create a new instance, uh, all of the launching the instances, and as I said, it suffers from the weakness of EC2 API design, right? So you can't do some things with EC2 API. You really can do. So now, Delta Cloud is a rec middleware, as I said. It's very easy. To mount Delta Cloud to your application, this is the snippet from config.r the rack up. So you just require Delta Cloud rec, and you use the rec builder to map Delta Cloud on slash API URL. That's it. So your the Delta Cloud API will be available in your application in this URL. You don't need to do anything else. You just do. It. Now I will show you the demo. So this is the small application. I uh, did for demoing this stuff. This is a Sinatra application. It has a Delta Cloud mounted on the on the slash API. So as you can see, this is a regular Delta Cloud API. I can even go for the HTML interface without JavaScript. But it also includes the user management. So I have a user admin. If this is the same application, just just Delta Cloud extended with other stuff. So what was I thinking about? Uh, I have a lot of cloud accounts, right? So I have the EC, multiple EC2 accounts for testing Delta Cloud. I, we have the multiple RepM servers, multiple OpenStack installations. And for all of those, I need to remember the credentials somehow, somehow right? When I'm testing the API, it's a pain. So, so I said, okay, so I will build a small Sinatra app so I can just add all these uh, uh, accounts and I can access all these providers without providing the real cloud credentials. I will use just my uh, application uh, credentials for accessing all the cloud providers. So, and, and this, this is it. So, so basically this is, uh, how it looks like I can I can add a new account so uh, I will I can give it some name then I will choose uh, from the drivers that Delta Cloud support I will 
enter the API username, API password, API provider, and uh, yeah, this I will add this later. Um, you can share your account with other users if you want. So, for example, if uh, I want to share my EC2 accounts with some other user of this application, I just click check this box and it will be public, so, so, so everyone can use it. So. This is how, for example, looks the EC2 API. Now let's just show this UA. So this is the API, original API username. I was registered one day ago. Callbacks, I will go to that later. This is uh, this application tracks the all requests to Delta Cloud API. So you can see like how many requests uh, was done, when the, the API was used last time and by who. And I can see the request. So I see like here, it was a get for API realms. So this is the query parameters. So someone requested JSON. Who was it? So it was me, admin, with this account one day ago. And the response was OK, so no error or something. I can also inspect the request. So this is what the client gets. So it's a representation of realms and JSON. This is the request details. So it was a get, I should be params. This provider was <coughs> HTTP headers. You know, I set the X Delta Cloud driver and, and so on. I can also see the if, if there will be some failure or something like that, like backend error or something like that, I can I can debug it or I can inspect like what went wrong. So this was some backend cloud error, so I can see what Delta Cloud returned. And as, as it's important to say it, it's this is not extending Delta Cloud internally. I just use Delta Cloud as a gem. So I'm not editing any functionality to Delta Cloud. This is my own application that just includes Delta Cloud and mount it. And I use the REC middleware to capture all the requests. So, so when I got this, you know, and it's actually working very <coughs> nice, so I can use a curl. I can use this application credentials, not, not the original cloud credentials. I can use Delta Cloud, I can get realms, and let's say I want to use the RefM account. I want to get JSON because it's no will just blow my terminal. Now I'm I just queried the RefM driver. I used the RefM driver, but as, as you can see, good morning. I turned them off. <laughs> as you can Obviously see, I use the admin <laughs> Red Hat. I, I don't. I haven't used the original RefM credentials. I use the application credentials, and I can use the same for the EC2, for example. So I will just change the driver to EC2. I don't need to care. I get the EC2 real. With the same credentials. Yeah. Um, so we've got a bunch of um, uh, places where we're storing um, provider credentials. Um, have we done a formal security review? What do you mean with security? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it sounds like a no. Uh, okay. <coughs> Not even close. Uh, have we? Uh, so we're, we're storing. Like, in the um, database. Uh, um, it, oh, wherever. Yeah. We're, we're storing um, usernames and passwords which are potentially commercially sensitive, yeah. you know, have monetary values associated with them. Yeah. Um, have we um, formally uh, looked at, and I don't think it's just Delta Cloud, I think Conductor probably has the same thing. <laughs> um, have we yeah, made sure that the way we're storing those, using those, is, is sensible. I don't know about the conductor. So, right. so 
that you have to know, as far as I can tell, it's stored in the PHX right yeah. now, isn't it? But not, not even just that. I mean, uh, uh, obviously, storing, storing credentials in clear text is really bad, but I mean, there are other, there are other issues around uh, yeah, we've got a group how they're process. used, who they're given to, um, yeah. and um, generally. There's been some effort of doing that, but it was not um, formal. I think Mo, um, one of our team members, actually went and looked. At, he, he did a sort of um, security um, oh, okay. he's, 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 he's that not. Was, that was at a different level. Though. So we, yeah. we have somebody from uh, the security response team working with us. Uh, That's so good. We've, done, good we've done audits um, over time um, and associated with each other. Which is not to say it is entirely secure, yeah. I mean, but it is to say that people have in fact reviewed it. Yeah. I mean, we, we reviewed the level of, you know, through our APIs, through our code, when it's working properly. Uh, what we, I guess what we haven't done, that's what the security team was dealing with, is yeah. issues of data security at the level of what happens in a breach, that kind yeah. of thing. We, we, uh, my sense <coughs> is that the uh, SRT guys are focused um, <coughs> not as much on the data security issues as other security related issues in the DOI workflow and security issues related to packages that we use. Um, but we're, we're starting to dig more and more into um, our stuff directly rather than just the stuff that there are advisors you know, in Rails, for instance. That's what initially we were picking up. Uh, uh, you know, as, as we're kind of going on in the website, we'll probably get a lot more into that too. Um, so, and just to finish this, uh, so once I have this user management tool, so I can use it for my daily basis without remembering all these crazy credentials, uh, then Honza yeah, come to me and said like, hey, it will be nice if you call the callbacks for, for the web books. So, so if I create an instance, I can register uh, some book and this hook will notify my application once the instance will be in a stopped state, right? For example, in RefM. So then I can just start the instance. So I was thinking, like, okay, for that, I think we will need some job scheduler or something like that. So I go with this idea, I went to, to Luther, and Luther said, ah, no, we stay stateless, we don't want any job scheduler or database or something like that. So I said, okay, so if Delta Cloud don't want database, then we can create a small application that wraps Delta Cloud database and jobs people right so I did a proof of concept of that so for example for the MOOC I can register a callback uh, for the resource in this case is instance I can specify the resource ID so for instance three I can specify the condition so if state is running then notify that you are and uh, I have a rescue job scheduler running in the on the background. So once I create this callback, this scheduler will create a job that uh, every 10 seconds query the mock driver for this uh, instance and uh, checking for that state. Once this, once this condition is true, it will set will do a post request way to update its resource to that URL. So it's simple. So I think this is what you want. Uh, I will probably have some short talk about uh, this track of like yeah. so we can <coughs> yeah. So actually, like this is like proof of concept. How can this be done with uh, in Delta Cloud without breaking Delta Cloud's uh, stateless, you know, status? So you can create your own application. So it's very easy actually how to create a callback. Right, you just specify I want instance condition URL. And if we expose this through API, this callback, so you can create callbacks through API, it will be easy for conductor. Create a new instance, also register a callback, just wait for the instance to become ready. Okay, so this is this uh, small publication I will. Uh, I promise to show the new documentation. So this is how the documentation looks like. It's still poor, but it's better than, than before. So you can, this is automatically generated by the Revit. So we don't need to write this or something. It's automatically generated from our code. So for example, this is a list of features, this is a list of the, of the operations you can do with instances. Uh, 
we can also get a list of uh, parameters in this case. So what can you use? You know. So this is what Rabbit provides. <coughs> and this documentation generator was contributed actually by some guy from an engineer. So they just found the from from engineer. Uh -huh. So they just found the the Rabbit uh, DSL is very cool. So they use it for some small projects, and they found that hey, we can generate documentation from that. So they contributed a small patch that generates all these HTML files. And yeah, you can also use it for CME if, if you want. So in in CME, instead of the cloud collection, you will see the CME collections and entities. Okay. So and now. Uh, what we are going to do next? First, so we we currently focus on improving the CME support. So, so we are trying to be very CME compliant, which is a very hard task uh, currently because the CME is very complex in definition. Uh, David is going to Tokyo for the DMTF uh, meeting, and uh, he will present uh, the Alta Cloud CME support there. So, until uh, that, we need to have something really strong. Uh, we want to continue extending Delta Cloud API with these small demos, like uh, you saw with uh, this application. So, to show things uh, that are currently impossible in Delta Cloud, how you can do it manually or just add some features you really want. Uh, we want to improve error handling and exceptions because uh, presently we found with Conductor that you suck handling uh, Delta Cloud exceptions. So we need to improve that. We need to unify the the various uh, exceptions we currently have for different for the same kind of errors, and yeah, we have the Jira tracker for that. Uh, we want to optimize the existing driver code. For example, the vSphere is really messy. So it's it's really nightmare to do something in that driver. So we want to improve that using some best practices in vSphere. And also the RV over. Uh, actually, the history of RV over is very funny because uh, I think I built the client for FM uh, two years ago. It was part of Delta Cloud. Then guys from over found that, found it, so they extracted it from Delta Cloud and created this gem. But they left only things that are supported in Delta Cloud and just making them. And now they discover, hey, we we need to add support for more more things like. Uh, clusters, data centers, networks that we in Delta Cloud we don't support. So we want to you know, uh, improve the argument as well, or just help help them. And we are looking for the new drivers. Google Compute Cloud is one on the list. So they recently started this Compute uh, Cloud business. So their API is, by the way, very similar to Delta Cloud API for some reason. But it's also some bastard OpenStack API. So We'll see. Uh, recently, we started Delta Cloud community meetings. So, so we have the full IRC calls with uh, guys that contributing the code, asking the questions. And we want to be more transparent. So we want to start using the our public IRC channel more and not uh, using the internal one. <coughs> we want to do more conferences. If we will have the budget for that. So that's another question. So, any questions? <coughs> so you, you mentioned um, that you don't support non-instance resources like virtual networks and that kind of thing. Um, that's obviously one of the <coughs> most complex areas it, in terms of uh, portability between different providers. I just wondered if you had any plans to expand what you um, interface for beyond network, instances. For networking, we definitely can't do something. So, right. so we have some uh, idea how to networking model should look like yeah. and we also have some patches for that but it's very complicated topic because uh, uh, for FM and uh, for FM and vSphere it's not really clear like what is network because they don't provide any network in uh, resource actually for uh, OpenStack you have, we have Quantum that we want to support yeah. and for uh, EC2 you have the VPC thing so it's like the virtual private networks. So and all these three are 
very different. Yeah, that's, that's exactly why I asked. Yeah. So, 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 so we're currently in the process for matching like what is common. So, yeah. so what, what can we, we reuse? And so you're going to try and pull out a subset of functionality. Yeah, exactly. that. yeah. We will definitely not support everything. So no. Just the, the, the part that is common for all yeah. the drivers. Oh, that sounds good.